Okay, so we just read the story Gary Sand Journal. Um, so now we're actually going to be working on creating our own observation tables using the mystery sand picture in the book. So scientists use tables like the ones in Sa Gary's Sand Journal to organize information they gather when investigating their questions. So remember that in the book, when he was looking at his sand, he would first make observations. So for example, in this picture, when he looks at the pictures of that sand, he notices that it's small, it has sharp edges, and it is mostly black and some white. So he's just writing down the things that he observes or can see. After that, he's using what he observed to think about what could all of these things mean. So because the size of those grains were small, it was evidence that the waves were probably small on that beach. Because he looked and noticed that the sand had sharp edges, he knew that the sand was probably new because it was not rounded. And then lastly, by looking at the color, he was able to tell that the sand was probably made of lava rocks and some shells because it's mostly black, but there is some white in it. So before we go ahead and actually start filling out a table, what do you notice about this table? And what do you think that the information means? So you can take a second to pause the video and go into your packet. You can answer it by writing it down, you can talk to somebody at home, or you can think about it in your head. So Gary observed a pattern or something that was similar over and over again. And what he's noticing is all these things are in these grains of sand. Most of them are small. So he recorded his observation inside the table. As we observe the mystery sand picture, we're going to be looking for patterns in the sand's size, shape, and color. So in your packet, there's a picture of this table. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to put a picture of the mystery sand back up, and then you guys can pause the video on that slide. You're gonna be looking at the picture of the mystery sand, and you're going to be writing down any of your observations in the column right here. So you're gonna be writing about the size, the shape and the color. After you've made your observations, you're going to think back to what we learned in the book about what these different things could mean. So based on the size, what could that be evidence of? Based on the shape, what could that be ev evidence of? Is it new or is it old? Based on the color, we can think of evidence about what that sand is actually made of. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a picture of the mystery sand back up. So here's the picture of the mystery sand that you're gonna be using to fill out your table. So you can go ahead and pause the video on this picture and begin filling out your table. Okay, so um, we're gonna be sharing our ideas about the question that we've been investigating. And our question is, how do geologists figure out how something changed when they cannot observe it changing? So remember, Remembering back to our story about um, the different landforms. So even though we might not always be able to see something changing quickly, things do change slowly over time. Um, whether that is wind causing rocks from a mountain to slowly start blowing off, which will change the shape of the mountain. Or even if we're thinking about our sand over time, the rocks might start off sharper and as the waves keep going over time, it's going to make that sand become more rounded, which will give us evidence that it is an older sand. Okay, and that is it for today. So I look forward to seeing you guys again tomorrow.